point, but their stuff can actually be rescued. You can a you actually get a mission uh, upon someone's death. You get a mission to go out there, find their uh, find a rucksack that Look contains that. all their things. And uh, well, there, there it is. Oh, there. right there. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> nice, nice timing on that question. Oh, there's a feral, and it's dead. Good. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm reacting. I've got I've got the game on two screens right now, playing at different times, and I'm reacting to them like a crazy person. Uh, you're probably hearing me react to a lot of things that you're not seeing, and it makes no sense, and that's why. Uh, i got to hang a blanket over the screen or something so I yeah. can't see it anymore. Sit tight. Um, I'm bringing this stuff home. So, uh, anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, you can, so, basically, if you pick up that rucksack and you take it home, uh, you're going to be able to... Uh, oh, that's interesting. You'll be, you're you're going to be able to take... Uh, uh, take all that stuff again, and you'll get it back in your uh, in your supply locker. Yeah, it looks like the sh uh, looks like Twitch had a quick little uh, hiccup. Um, be sure to hit refresh on the screen because it did go down. So we'll hit refresh right there. Yeah, junk jock jockey okay. said that he thinks that a zombie took out the stream. Quickly. Yeah, <laughs> Z zombies think uh, video streams are delicious, actually. So all right, and. Uh, Okay, so yeah, so uh, Dan Smith 61 uh, a short while back had a question: What's different about the Xbox One edition uh, versus the Xbox edition and the Xbox 360 edition? And uh, you, we've kind of been you going through it very slowly over the course I of this uh, over the stream, but to quickly summarize, a bunch of graphical sc stuff got redone: higher res textures, brand new effects, a lot of brand new animations. Uh, we've added a new close combat system that lets you fight uh, fight with a knife even when all of your other weapons have been broken. Uh, We've added a new mission line that's about collecting supply drops from big crowds of zombies. We've added a bunch of new vehicles, uh, including a bunch of unique skins like, what is that? American, like, that's the American, flag. It's an American flag car. Awesome. So yeah, so we've got a bunch of, a bunch of new vehicles. Uh, and uh, we've added support for game DVR, though you can turn it off if you want to. We've added uh, Xbox One challenges, which basically allow you to, you know, uh, participate in, in monthly in monthly events let you unlock in-game content that you can't get any other way. Uh, and uh, as usual, I'm probably forgetting something, but... Uh, oh yeah, we've, at, yeah, we've added some new, a bunch of new guns, a lot of them available through the challenges, some of them available through the supply drops. Uh, and, we've, uh, and we've also got a pre-order bonus, the Preppers Pack, and a bonus for people who bought the original game. Okay, so uh, see here. Uh, Fat Boy Hustle. So, uh, let's see, I haven't actually read the li li thing that Fredboy also said yet, so. He's just showing you guys some love. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, all the good things to say. Interview. Oh, thank you so much. It's, you know, our favorite thing is talking to people um, uh, about this game. Uh, you know, because we, we, we go to ev every PAX that we can afford to go to, which means not Australia. So sorry, Australians. Uh, we haven't been able to afford the plane fare yet. But uh, we go to every PAX that we can. We I love to talk to left. fans of the game. And, um, you know, one of the things that we see that is actually one of the things that really helps us a lot as a developer. Getting to talk to people who have played the game who've had their own experiences with us, who, who, who can tell us, you know, what the game is really like to play. We know how we feel when we're playing the game, but that, that's not everything. You know, we, there's, there's so many different people in the world playing this game, and we, we need to know what they, uh, uh, you know, what, what they're feeling. And, and I can tell you, uh, there's a lot of features in this game that came directly from fan feedback. I know that, um, for instance, whenever you see Brant walk up to the back of a car and uh, push the Y button and, uh, and look inside, uh, that feature, being able to put uh, put things in the backs of cars, that wasn't in the original game. We actually got a lot of feedback from from fans in our forums uh, that told us, you know, that, that this was a, a thing they needed. They were actually a lot of them were using the physics system, trying to pile rucksacks in the backs of their pickup trucks so they could take uh, to supply runs back to their houses, manually loading them all in, loading them out. So now you can just put them back in the car. You can drive into your parking uh, your parking space, and all of it gets just loaded right into your base with uh, no extra effort. And, th and we released that, uh, th that came out at the same time as the Lifeline DLC, but we gave that to everybody for free, because it's something we felt like should have been, uh, you know, part of the original game. So, and we do that kind of stuff all the time. We're always trying to listen to people who played the game, and so he just loaded his stuff in there. Uh, you yeah, we're always trying to, uh, you know, help people out uh, who've played the game, and, uh, oh, got a thing to do. How's it going? I'm almost there. There you go. Don't say I never gave you anything. All right, so that is another uh, dupe real prize. Remember, all you have to do to enter is uh, talk in the Twitch chat, and you are qualified uh, for our random generator, Mr. Nightbot. Uh, and it's for a State of Decay digital download game code. 
Uh, again, though, we are not giving them out at the end of the stream because the game hasn't even launched yet. So you're seeing the game before it even launches. Uh, we're actually going to be giving them out on launch day, which is April 28th. Yep, is that April, correct? April All right. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I saw that. So, uh, so Stray has a question asking about the name of State of Decay, where it came from, and... and and, uh, so, and and what it has to do with uh, with the gameplay. And uh, basically, it, it was uh, I wasn't actually there when the game was named, so I don't know if Brant's got much to say about it. It was a uh, I know it was it was a it was a serious effort. A serious effort was put into uh, uh, you know uh, looking at a lot of different possibilities for the name and choosing this one. So uh, we wanted to avoid using the word dead or death because that was sort of the standard go-to with zombie games. But more importantly, uh, we wanted to really portray the um, the sense that the world is depleting and um, state of decay just seemed to work because we're also trying to, uh, oops, I'm getting eaten while I'm talking here. Um, <laughs> get in the car, get it, in the car. It was important to show that it, it's also about um, community and people trying to survive in this well, I'm not going to survive here. Yeah. I think we might be we might be screwed. We're gonna we're gonna show permadeath yet again. Oh, I look got at that. nothing left. Oh, you got up. You got up. Ah! Now get in the car. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, it it uh, when we were brainstorming, uh, the K came up and it was just a perfect um, sort of uh, encapsulation of of everything that we really wanted to to show. Up. Yeah, so so when I when I first joined the company, it was it was right after the uh, the original game came out, and uh, and one of my first jobs was planning out the DLC packs, and my my first instinct was to have the word dead in all of them because that's what you see in every single state. And, and as soon as I submitted that that you know uh, that that proposal, the boss was like, "No, we're not putting the word dead in anything because yeah, because it's like we don't we don't want this to come across like it's just like it's another cash in zombie game. They'll be like, "Oh look, all these zombie games are out here. People love them." We're gonna make one too. This game's got something special about it. Uh, we got a question from Mugrinisfit. I don't know. Mugrinisfit. Mugrinisfit. Does the game have any multiplayer? And this is a question that we get a lot because when people play this game, one of the first things they want to do is have the same experience with a friend. Uh, this original game was was basically you know, fr from day one. We've been talking about the fact that uh, we want to make a multiplayer state of decay. That's been kind of the mission statement of the company from from very early on. Um, but yeah, this original game that we made was sort of a proof of concept of just the uh, you know just what it means to make a community-based zombie survival fantasy, and uh, and you know the, the kind of game that this is you know it, it it you can you can imagine what multiplayer would be like. But this original version of the game we, we weren't able to do multiplayer. We were just able to do sort of the the single-player community-based open-world zombie survival fantasy. But that was a lot. That was a lot to bite off, especially for a, for a young and independent studio. So. This so this version of the game here you're seeing the year one survival edition is the ultimate version of uh, of single player state of decay, and uh, yeah, Brent. There's uh, uh this whole street is a really good example. We were talking earlier of uh, Easter eggs and homage. We've got Boyle's Pet Shop for Danny Boyle, um, Paradise Travel, and the four places that it's advertising are. Check this out. This came over uh, the radio Columbus, a little while ago. I little managed Rock. to record most of it. Wichita and Tallahassee, this, and those are uh, the like handles the for the for the, uh, the, the four main characters from Should Zombieland. We've got um, we've got Papa Fulci's Pizzeria, uh, Fulci being the master of Italian zom uh, zombie movies. Um, so there's there's dozens. Of, of homage and reference and things like that. Yeah, I, I believe that there might actually be a, a suburban left. house somewhere that you can find that's got a, a row of lawnmowers and some plants uh, lined up. So, <laughs> actually, it's, I'm going to take a drive over there. Yeah, you know what? I don't actually know if I've noticed that house yet. People tell me this exists, but uh, I, I want Brant to show it to me right now. That means we. Uh, and I think Blaine's Jurassic. grocery is actually oh. from Zombieland as well, what, isn't it? Uh, Blaine is. You know, I I wish uh, I wish our environment guy was here. Who, who's sad? I thought I remembered that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that might very well be the case. We've got uh, yeah, our, uh, James, our our environment artist, has been. Uh, he's he's such a huge part of, of of sort of what. Oh hey, that see that see that uh, tow truck up there by the way, the little piggy tow truck. That is actually one of our uh, challenge prizes. So it, right now it's just a sign. When you find it there, you can't actually drive that truck. But if you finish one of our challenges, you'll get that truck as a drivable vehicle you can tootle around the town in. I think we're going to have to play with that in a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we got all the challenges unlocked. That's Holy right. Holy crap. Oh, I'm going to use the car against this guy. Yeah, see what, see what happens when you crash into the juggernaut. 
So just he knocks down, but you've just popped both your front tires. Oh. And that's just a disaster. And now so I'm in real trouble. Now you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you can't drive as fast with no tires. Uh, you can. The door does almost nothing to him. Yeah, the door. The door is. The door is good for small zombies. The door's not good for big zombies. So, actually, so there is. There. Is, I'll tell you, there is a trick to using a car to kill zombies because, uh, you know, like like you said, the game is called State of Decay because everything in it wears out. Vehicles wear out. Uh, you know, your your people wear out. Uh, your uh, your your uh, your weapons wear out. But uh, one thing, you know, so, so the if you keep hitting things with the front of your car, one of the reasons we got that that car door move is if you hit things with the front of your car, it'll start smoking. The you'll take engine damage, and eventually the car is going to explode because you know that's what cars do. Um, but if you hit them with the with the car door, that doesn't happen. But that takes a lot of skill. It takes a lot of effort to hit something with a car door and not with the front bumper. Uh, and so one thing that uh, that you can do is if you just drive around backwards. Uh, there's nothing in the trunk that's gonna blow that car up. So you can just uh, you can you can run all over the place backwards and uh, bump into as many zombies as you want, and uh, and your engine's not gonna take any damage. <laughs> this car that I'm standing next to is named after my son. Oh, check! I didn't even catch that. The Brogan Sport. That's awesome. Uh, I actually uh, I named uh, a bunch of the characters in the game after my kids. Uh, in, in Breakdown, we've got this collection of characters that are called Heroes, where um, we've got this. Uh, actually, you can look at the challenge menu if you want to for just a sec. Um, if we open up the, the menu and uh, pop over to the far right corner there, this is the challenge menu. Uh, if you scroll up and down that thing, you can see there's a lot of different challenges to, uh, to try to uh, unlock. If you do all these things that it says, you'll unlock a new character with a specialty that'll come into your, it'll come into your base and give you a bunch of, you know, uh, a cool character to play with a bunch of extra equipment, a bunch of extra skills. And uh, 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 several of those characters are actually named after my family. I named uh, uh, there's uh, there's one woman named after my wife. Our, our our sort of geek girl characters named after one of my daughters. Uh, our gardening characters named after my youngest daughter who likes to uh, dig in the yard and come into the house completely covered in dirt. Uh, Jeffrey has 113 children. I have 113 children. <laughs> uh, one of, and and uh, my uh, my son wasn't actually born until after uh, Lifeline came out, and so I couldn't name anything after him. So one of our challenge characters, the, the the one character you unlock with a with a challenge in the middle of summer, is named after my son. So you basically can murder my entire family in this game if you want to, which is actually kind of horrifying. Now I've said it out loud. And to piggyback, it's a perfect segue. There was a question: What happens if all your characters die? Hey, I just got word of Different things, of uh, depending on which which version of the game you're playing. Uh, in the original game, uh, the just the vanilla State of Decay, uh, if you lose all of your characters, then we spawn a new one, and you get to keep going. So, so that character, that that story just keeps on going no matter what happens. So you can lose everybody, and and you're you're gonna keep on playing, and just those tragedies become a part of your story uh, rather than just being an occasion to restart the game. You can't actually reload a save when a character dies. That's it. Uh, they're gone. We we save immediately. Uh, and so, so you c you can't go back and get them back. So that's just uh, that's just a big part of uh, of your story. So that's the first game. Um, breakdown. If you lose all your characters, uh, the game's over. You got to start over again. But if you've been unlocking heroes, you can actually decide which of those uh, heroes you want to start your next game as. Uh, we we treat it as sort of an arcade mode. You know, get as far as you can. See how high you can make your score. Uh, we're, we're tracking you know, things like zombie kills the whole time. And uh, and uh, oh oh oh, we've got one of our. Um, Easter eggs here. So this little tourist trap that he's been pulling around in here uh, is called Jurassic Junction. A bunch of you might have noticed a bunch of fiberglass dinosaurs uh, decorating the place. So he's uh, he's now got the Jurassic Junction SUV, which is a brand new car we've added uh, just for the game. It might look familiar to you, though. We are going to you know we will deny anything if sued. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is the Jurassic Junction SUV. Um, anyway, in, in Lifeline, uh, the, 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 the second DLC, if you lose all your characters in that, uh, you've basically, uh, your, uh, the remaining uh, soldiers in your unit get pulled out. Uh, that's actually something, there's several different things that can go wrong uh, in Lifeline to get you pulled out of the city uh, by your commanding officers. It's a military game, you're not, you don't really get to decide everything you do. You've got commanding officers and you've got to make so them happy or, uh, or they're going to pull you out of town. All right, again, to be eligible, all I got to do is type in the Twitch chat. Uh, the most common is dupe uh, to get eligible. Uh, and it's left. been looking like Nightbot's been picking everyone that's been following the channel. So 
that's not required, but I don't know. Everyone that's uh, winning so far has uh, been following the channel. Uh, again, we're going to send those out on April 28th to your Twitch inbox. All right, so uh, this is this is one of my favorite cars that he's driving in the game, actually. This, uh, this what's it called? The Chevelle? Or something? The, no, the Caballo. It's the Caballo. That's right. Uh, and so, like, can, uh, can you do, like, pull a 180 in that sucker? I, lo I love the way this looks. Uh, I just got to give a call out. Real, uh, I always like to call out everyone kind of just playing on words with Duke. Uh, my favorite one is the, uh, what you going to do, brother? I think Nicholas or someone said that. I that or Nick Fortune 86. Uh, that's a good one. All right, so uh, what el what else to say? What else we talk about? So, um, actually, um, do we want to try to switch into Lifeline? Uh, show show how different that other map is, or do, or do you want to show a couple more things to this map before we move on? Um, let's see. We should probably just see sort of un uh, some of the variation that we have in the landscape. Oh, that's true, because we've been spending most of our time out in the suburbs uh, so far. Uh, but yeah, you can go. Yeah, Grant's going to show you some of the more wilderness areas. You actually start out the game, uh, the original game. Uh, you start out at uh, at kind of a camping, uh, uh, resorty sort of area. That's you know deep in the wilderness. Lots of little tents and cabins everywhere. And this this you know has a very different looking feel from uh, from from the suburban areas in the game. You can see you've got these dilapidated old houses that have been abandoned years ago. You don't even know how people used to get up here to uh, live in a place like this. Uh, there's also a there's, there's a lumber yard. Uh, up this way somehow, <laughs> and uh, no going, one ever sees. I'm going the back way. Oh, nice! I don't. I don't think I even knew this place existed. So, uh, Brand, Brand is giving you guys the real tour right What's the now. The benefit of going around and placing all these little campsites. Oh, holy crap! Look at that! I have never searched this place in my life. That's amazing. <laughs> I've played a bunch of this game, but I have not seen this. Don't ever try this with your uh, Mustang, by the way. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Or a car. Hey, that and looks Brett. Ratchild asks, um, "How do you finish the game? Is there an actual ending?" Yeah, yeah. there's definitely a hard stop to the game. I'll let Jeffrey uh, talk about it while I'm trying to stay on the road here. Yeah. So in the original game, the first one before the DLC came out, there was actually a story that you're playing through, a specific set of characters that you start with, um, and their main goal is to try to get out of this valley. This valley's actually been barricaded and blocked off by the military, uh, trapping everyone inside. They're, they're, they're putting up these... Oh, want to look show something? Oh, yeah, check out the mist, by the way, before we uh, uh, go on with that. This is what happens as the sun starts to set. It gets to be dusk. Uh, suddenly, the fog effects ramp up. The, the shadows are all different, kind of non-existent. Real quick, real quick. Well, talk to Endgame, but people are saying no spoilers, please, because they're excited to play it. So okay. if you can tell it without giving the spoilers, uh, good call out, Weirhawk, because I'm going to be playing it, too, and I didn't want it. Okay, I'm going to avoid the spoilers. So basically, you, you, you're, you, you've you got a goal to get out of there uh, because the military's blocked it off. I won't tell you how that goes. Uh, certainly, you know, uh, zombie stories are full of disappointments. So there's no, no spoilers here just talking about what your goal is. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so th but there is an ending to the game. Uh, Lifeline similarly has an ending. Uh, but the ending is different depending on what you do. Um, you, you know, you, you're sent out there with a, uh, with a mission to go and rescue people from this uh, completely overrun uh, downtown urban area. And if you, uh, you know, and, and if it, you, can, you can succeed, you can go out there and you can get, you know, get, get every single person. You can fail. And there's also other sub-objectives you can get. You know, there's, there's characters who say, you know, you're not, you're not officially there to rescue me, but, you know, but if you, uh, if you do, it's going to make, you know, it's going to make all the difference. Depending on how, how you uh, make all those choices in the game, you're gonna have there's several different endings you can have, different combinations of endings you can have. So uh, so so Lifeline's got an ending, but it's it's really up to you how it turns out. Breakdown, the only ending is your death. You can play that game for as long as you want, and uh, and it just gets harder and harder and harder. And if eventually eventually you might die, uh, and that's the ending of that game. But if you don't die, you can just keep playing that game as long as you want. We've had. We have players on uh, that we've actually met in person who've shown us that they have over a thousand hours playing one game of Breakdown. Yeah, which is just ridiculous. They're up to like level 100 something. And, and what's the cost of the game right now all for the Xbox One Edition? Uh, the Xbox One Edition of this game costs $30, uh, and uh, and that includes not just the original game, but both of the DLC packs. So it's all packaged into one for $30. And with uh, over a thousand hours possible of gameplay, that is an amazing, amazing, uh, great value for your money. 
I do want to point out that that's not uh, sort of the standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah. So the you know it's 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 a so little closer to you know uh, each of those versions of the game. We expect you to get more you know uh, more in the tens of hours rather than the hundreds of hours out of them. Uh, I know I know that the, the, the lifeline it takes about six to eight hours to get through the uh, get through the main campaign. But we tried to uh, to make breakdown and lifeline in particular. We tried to make them as replayable as possible with different ways to play through different things you can accomplish when you get through it. Well, and that's also aided by the fact that we. Uh, we're a systems-based game, we're, and I'll let Jeffrey go into more of that, but um, uh, no two playthroughs will ever actually be the same. Yeah, it's one of the one of the things that we think about a lot as, as being How being a pretty small studio compared to, you know, a lot of the studios out there that are making big open-world games, uh, they're a lot larger than we are. They have hundreds of people working on these games. Uh, when this original game was made, it was only 20 people in the studio, and now we've got more, but it's, uh, but still, you know, this... Uh, the the DLC packs, you know, my my team was sometimes as small as, as as six people at a time working on this, and so when you're making a game like that, you really realize, you know, you can't just say, oh, we're gonna have this huge set piece, we're gonna have this, you know, this this series of events where you spend an, an hour going from one big huge cinematic event to another. That's not even an option. You gotta think of you gotta think about games differently when you're making them with a, a small team. And so this game, it's, it's heavily system driven which means that you know it's about the simulation it's about you know you're living in this world the zombies have got have got rules for how they behave uh rules for how they you know they they congregate in hordes for how they infest buildings uh and so, and most of what the uh of what you're doing in the game is is, is going uh, around and interacting with that simulation and so uh you know your your playthrough is going to be very different from my playthrough going to be very different from your friend's playthrough uh, and so what you're seeing here, I mean, you, you see, you know, Brant basically has freedom to go around and do whatever he wants to do. Um, a lot of open world games, too, um, you know, they're, they're basically, the open world is the setting, but the experience of the game is basically a linear story that, that, that is, is sort of using the open world as a backdrop, but really what you're doing is just going from one linear thing to the next. In our game, uh, we have, you know, certain parts of our game have a semi-linear story, but m you're going to spend much more of your time just going and just trying to survive in this world, which is, uh, you know, which, which, is, which makes the, the gameplay just extremely variable. You know, what, what you do in one playthrough is going to be very different from another. So I'll, and we'll, uh, we'll switch over yes. to um, Humans Lifeline after I get to play zero. with... Uh, the rocket or the grenade launcher. Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? Did we have we played with an incendiary Looks shotgun like yet? Shot. I haven't found one. Oh, oh yeah. Probably you went to the gun shops and it wasn't there. You never quite know what you're gonna get uh, in in this game. It's like a box of chocolates. Um, so yeah. So that is something that I hadn't been talking about yet. That uh, that we added with the new uh, with the new game. We've actually added two uh, completely new uh, weapon types, uh, which uh, which are the underslung grenade launchers. So you can get an assault rifle. That's got a grenade launcher uh, attached to it, so you don't have to go rummaging in your backpack to get your grenade launcher out. You just switch fire modes and fire. Uh, we've also added uh, incendiary shotguns. Which are, you know, I in the original game, you run around with a shotgun, and uh, you know you can you can definitely you can knock down a crowd of zombies with the with the spray of shot. But you're actually not all that great at getting the headshots. It'll kill them. Uh, and so so shotguns are good for slowing the zombies down. Not all that great for killing him off, uh, but the incendiary shotgun. Every zombie you hit with that thing uh, is, is going to catch on fire and die. So uh, it's uh, it, it's a very different experience. And now, now we're going to see one of our lovely death animations. Okay, that is some Mortal Kombat stuff right there. Shibuya. Actually, before I do the big wheel, we always like to do on death scenes uh, the best captions we can do on the death scene. One of the more combat Kung Lao ones we got. That's a splitting headache. It's really good. All right, that's another dupe. Uh, be sure to type in the Twitch chat to be eligible uh, to win a State of Decay digital code. And just as a reminder, those will be sent on April 28th to your Twitch account. Awesome. So we're going to be uh, starting Lifeline. It takes just a sec. But uh, so so for those of you who, uh, who uh, were not here for the original de description of how this works, so the original game, State of Decay, was a story of some folks trying to escape this place called Trumbull Valley that was overrun with zombies. Uh, the second, uh, the, the, sorry, the first DLC, sort of the second version of our game, was Breakdown, which is basically your story, trying to survive in the uh, in, in the zombie apocalypse for as long as you possibly can. Lifeline, which is what we're about to show you, um, 
is a story of a military unit that's dropped into a uh, an urban area that's been completely overrun with zombies, and they're on a mission uh, to rescue as many scientists and other you know a, a key important personnel as they can before they're forced to pull out because the city's totally overrun. So one of the main differences in this one is uh, in the first game or in the first two, uh, making a lot of noise wasn't always the smartest idea. Um, and in uh, Lifeline, since you're playing the military. We we're going to let you go out a little bit. Yeah, we've actually, you know, we've got folks around the office who, you know, when they when they originally played the game, some of our, our, our newer hires, they're like, I didn't almost, I almost didn't realize there were guns in the game because I got so scared of firing a gun because it was going to bring zombies down on my head that, uh, you know, I just wasn't even ever going to get them. I didn't realize there were, a, there were 200 guns in this game. Um, 240. 240 guns in this game. Uh, so, uh, but we, you know, we didn't want that to be a waste. Brant has put a lot of love into this game. And so, basically, we made a version of the game where, uh, yeah, when you're out Stay and about uh, scavenging, shooting shooting oh your guns might be a bad idea because it brings the zombies running. But we've also got a base defense uh, feature in this game where basically all the zombies know exactly where you are. Uh, they're going to, you know, th th there's no question of trying to be stealthy when the zombies are swarming your base. You get to haul out those guns and do whatever you want with them. Yeah. So right now he's starting yeah, out. Exactly. He is playing as uh, uh, as uh, Alicia Hawks. She's the commander of this, uh, this military unit. She's got a couple of her soldiers there with her, Kilo and Vince. Medivac is ready to go, but right now Greyhound Two is busy There's fucking my, up my LZ. My Get over there and secure yeah, so, that so as always, we We're cast Brand as being the, the biggest jerk uh, in though. the entire. Thing. He's their problem. commanding officer, talking to them over the radio, screaming at him and yelling at him whenever they get anything wrong. Yeah, there is a trend. <laughs> I didn't join the army to shoot Americans, man. Americans? I think we canceled their passports when they joined the living dead. When I played it's uh, not like they were recruited. Right Vince. after we released the original game, died. I would get so calls from my friends at 2 a.m. Um, and all they would Somebody say is, dude, I just shot you in the face. Private because Vincent, <laughs> you, think the end of the world because you could, you you could actually... Uh, Soldiers, man. The, you kill his first character. Yeah, yeah. The character Let of Alan know. actually gets sick, and you have the option to put him down. Dude, spoilers! Oh, that didn't happen. I just, <laughs> I just totally lied to you guys. I hope that's okay. Yeah, I know he lives forever. Brand is immortal. Uh, and so, so yeah, we. This um, is ALZ, but we're not landing a helo on those Zs. So right now, uh, you've been assigned. You've been sent in uh, separately from the guys who were here to set up your base. Uh, but you just, uh, you, you've lost contact with them. You don't know what kind of shape they're in. And now you're showing up at your base, and uh, it's being overrun by zombies. So you got to come in and help out. This base, this military base. Uh, James and Brandt built this thing from scratch to be a brand new base at a uh, bunch of facilities and things that nobody ever had before, including a helipad, supply drops, and uh, and also a uh, a latrine, which is uh, which is a, br a first for the game having a having a latrine as a as a facility. Um, but it, we call this base Black Friday because uh, it's it's uh, it's built out of an old shopping mall, and there's a bunch of crowds uh, gathering outside trying to get in. Wow, this this gunfire is really loud. It's making, <laughs> making it hard to stop. Um, so yeah, so we're, uh, we're we're taking out these zombies. So what you'll notice, I mean, basically everything about this game, uh, this this DLC pack is 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 basically it's got a military theme to it. Um, you know, when you're earning the trust of your uh, uh, of your characters and making them your friends, we're not calling them friends anymore. We're calling them officers. So those are the folks who uh, you know who actually have enough, uh, uh, you know, who, who've maybe gotten uh, field promotions. And are allowed to go, kind of go and uh, and, and decide you know, to do out in the field uh, versus being enlisted men who uh, can't uh, basically got to do. It. So it looks like we've uh, cleared out the base. We don't have artillery yet. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, we're gonna have artillery. Uh, that, that's another thing that's a, a big feature of Lifeline is the fact that uh, from the very beginning Greyhound of the game. Too. Uh, you get access to a lot of military hardware and artillery right. and it's drone strikes and whatever now. to take the zombies out. I don't even know what happened to my comms. So with the, uh, uh, so uh, the gunshot sounds that you just asked. brought up, Bai brings up a like uh, great question. Uh, we spoke about anyway. the graphics, but was there any changes to the sounds also in the Xbox One version? One. I, Ooh, I the always LZ. forget this Finally. one. So there's several things we did with the sound. The, um, get on the road, a lot of the sound effects were about the same. They were already, they were already, we got, we got a really, uh, awesome audio team that did a great job coming up with a lot of these sounds. We've added 30 minutes of new music from, uh, Jesper Kidd, our, uh, our, our composer. And we've also, we 
brought back uh, so some of these characters, these, these folks you're seeing here, uh, Alicia Hawks, um, Kilo, Vince, and this other guy you haven't met yet, who's my favorite character in the game, Sasquatch. Uh, not a literal Sasquatch. That's just his call sign. He's a he's a special ops guy. Um, uh, these guys, uh, they they we we brought them in for Lifeline, but they uh, they weren't in uh, in the original in, in the first DLC pack breakdown. And so we brought all those actors back into the studio and got them to record their voices uh, again, so that we could bring all four of those characters into Lifeline. I mean, sorry, into Breakdown. So uh, so if, so now in the original uh, version of the game, uh, no Lifeline characters were in Breakdown because you know we made Breakdown first. Uh, we didn't have those characters yet. But now uh, you've got a bunch of Lifeline stuff in Breakdown. And actually, I should say uh, a lot of your base facilities too. When we were building this military base, uh, we added a bunch of stuff that had never been in the game before, like an, an ammo refilling station, so you can make whatever caliber ammunition you want. Uh, you can make your own sort of MREs uh, over, uh, you know, put together little improvised MREs with plastic bags and stuff in the, uh, in the kitchen. Uh, you could repair your weapons by spending uh, resources uh, in your supply locker. And all that stuff was new, and so we, we've now taken that, we've brought it back into Breakdown and into the original game. Uh, so all, those, all, all the best ideas from Lifeline basically are now propagated throughout, the, origi uh, throughout the original games. I've seen worse. Uh, Lacrone, awesome. I seriously can't wait for this game either. I agree with you 100%. This is, this is definitely going to go into my uh, game rotation. And Nemesis asks, are there different difficulty levels or is there just one Greyhound set difficulty one for this game? So, uh, yeah, breakdown, breakdown is its own difficulty yes. level. <laughs> yeah. So, so the uh, the original game and Lifeline just have one difficulty level. Uh, but actually, you know what? They're all kind of different. Actually. So the original game, uh, it gets harder slowly over time. New new zombies get added. Uh, the, the, the zombie population goes up, and you start facing uh, more challenging uh, zombie types as it goes on. Um, and uh, oh, and yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, sorry to cut you off. Um. We actually have two more, uh, an extra state of decay going because one of our winners was actually a Microsoft employee and we are not allowed to win. So <laughs> congratulations. Uh, apologies, Ed, uh, but we are not eligible to win the prizes. Uh, just saw that in the Skype chat that came. But good news to our viewers. So the next dupe we do, we're going to pull two winners. Awesome. All right. So, so uh, difficulty levels in Breakdown. Breakdown is all about difficulty levels. So you start at Breakdown level one. Uh, you play for as long as you can. You try to get your uh, your your community up until it's ready to get on the RV and move on. When you get on the RV and move on, you move on to Breakdown level two. And the zombies are harder. And uh, the, the supplies are harder to find. And everything gets a lot more difficult. Expand your search to the surrounding And and so and then that happens again at Breakdown level three, at Breakdown level four, and it keeps going and it gets harder and harder and harder over time and so you, so you basically you can play until you get to the your, your difficulty level you're comfortable with and then you stick around as long as you can so just uh, another little fun note um, during my doing my research for the firearms and stuff I became friends with one of our forum members and uh, um, actually pretty close I, I named some of the guns uh, gun stores in lifeline after him because he he actually did a whole bunch of like incredible research for me that made my job a lot easier so this C battery of the 274th is actually in reference to his uh, grandfather's unit in World War II. We like to do things like that for for the fans because uh, we couldn't have, we couldn't be here without you guys. So yeah, and, and Hawks's sidearm is uh, is his grandfather's gun, isn't it? From yeah, World War II? it was a it was a German pistol that he actually captured from a from a German officer. So basically, the, the 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 model of that gun is based on that gun, and the textures are basically straight for the, the scans of that gun. Yeah, the textures is a straight up. Um, photograph of his actual firearm. So yeah, so and that's I mean th that's one of the reasons why we do things like 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 the Xbox One challenges. I mean we want to have an engaged community of people who keep playing this game over time because we get to make these relationships with our fans. We get to really uh, you know get to the point where we're we're, we're making stuff that they really want. Uh, before you do anything awesome, uh, I think we might. Do you have another dupe? Yeah. Designating a location for a drone strike. <laughs> That's nice one. <laughs> All right, so Sheroy, uh, nice our one. our Nightbot uh, operator, draw it once. Uh, wait for 30 seconds and draw it again for a second time. And no, we can't give out another code. Bilbo, Bilbo's not giving a, a, up his code. He is sacrificing it for a $15 Xbox All gift card because he already pre-ordered the game, which is awesome, oh. from the 360. So uh, we can definitely take care of that, uh, Bilbo, for you. We will update in our tracker uh, the $15 gift card in place of the uh, State of Decay code. 
But we can give that State of Decay code out on our community channel when we stream State of Decay on there once it goes live. So that is where that code is going to go. Awesome. Uh, so we've got. Uh, so one of the things that I think uh, Brant was just about to do. Uh, oh, hey, there's the doctor. Let's rescue this guy. So th this is the first of the many scientists that you're that you're here to rescue. This is Doctor Horn, uh, named after my great grandparents, uh, Hello? and which is pretty much everybody's named after you must somebody. Must be Doctor Thomas name. Horn. We're here to get you out. Um, I'm not sure that I should. Doghouse <laughs> actual degree hound one. Uh, so anyway, sorry. I, I'm keeping. I'm, I've, I've got other audio feeding in my ears. So I keep getting distracted Roger, by it. But um, up the asset now. Oh, Whenever God. we're done with this, I, I think Brant's going to show you some of the news, uh, perks of being in the military. The damn gates uh, over here. <laughs> you can do some things that other people air, can't. The we can all get the fuck out. Go for it. Now go. So actually, uh, this is, oh, there's some zombies around. Good. So this is a drone strike. So this is like an infrared beacon that uh, that uh, the robotic drone can can zero in on, and the zombies love infrared. It's the, it's their favorite thing, really. Watch the front. And now they've been hit by a predator drone. So you can do you can do stuff like that when you're in the military. Uh, a lot of those whoa. So a lot of those uh, 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 abilities they we, we uh, there was there was an artillery barrage in the original game, uh, but we added a ton more variety to the to the different radio call-ins and stuff. You can call in uh, uh, drone recon, which tells you where all the zombies are over your head, uh, or not the zombies aren't over your head. Hopefully we don't have flying zombies in this game. That would be crazy. Uh, but, but, you know, you, the, the drone overhead tells you where all the zombies are, uh, helps you, uh, you know, survey the terrain for you without, you know, you, you're not going to have to survey it yourself. Uh, we've got a bunch of different destructive things. We've got, a, like, a napalm drop that'll set all the zombies on fire. Uh, and so we took a lot of those things and we brought them back into Breakdown for the, for the Year One Survival Edition. So, in Breakdown, if you, if you pick up, when you grab these characters that are, that, that, that were brought over into Breakdown, they bring with them, uh, the ability to call in some of these airstrikes. There's another fan appreciation right there. Oh, yeah. Futter is one of our uh, favorite four members. He's one of the guys who's been pushing for pie from day one. So, Futter's Acres of Pie. Uh, you know, en enjoy your pie today. And that's actually the uh, the pinnacle of my artistic ability. Right <laughs> <there>. <laughs> Brant is a cartoonist in his spare time. So but Only uh, only of cartoon pie. So, let's, let's talk a little bit about this map. So, um... Uh, when we first started uh, Breakdown, one of the things, you know, we realized that we did uh, we had this 16 square kilometer map. There was no way we were going to be able to uh, replicate that in, in just a few months with Breakdown with only one environment artist. So what we did instead was James, our environment artist, uh, just said, you know what, I'm just going to start on DLC 2. So he uh, he said, you know, and, and he had always wanted to do a, uh, he had always wanted to do a, uh, an urban setting in this map. He wanted to do a, a map where, uh, you know, that, that, that could... Uh, do a few things that the original map couldn't do, uh, and so he just got started on making this uh, the Danforth Beltway was uh, what, what we called this map for a while, and uh, and so we we spent uh, six months making Breakdown, put it out you know six months after the original game came out, and then we went over to James's desk and said what have you been doing for the past six months? And he's like well let me show you this map, uh, and we're like okay we're gonna do something with this, so we. Um, uh, we came up with Lifeline, came up with this whole military theme, the story of, you know, rescuing these people, defending this base, and, uh, and we used James's map. So, so we, you know, we kind of cultivate a very collaborative atmosphere over at Red Labs. This isn't, this isn't the kind of studio where, you know, you just get, like, uh, you got one, like, celebrity designer who's, uh, you know, uh, telling everybody what to do. This is a, uh, uh, this is a place where, you know, we're all pretty much equally involved in the, in the creative process here. Here's something Brant's right showing you. He's showing you the danger zone. Uh, whenever you get too close to the middle of town, uh, when, you, when you looked at that map that you saw before, there was a big red splotch in the middle of town. In fact, uh, yeah, you can even see it on your mini-map when it's up. Um, these areas around the edges of the map are called danger zones. Uh, that's where we're sort of showing you what this, what it's like inside the city. Um, so the, uh, the reason you can't go inside this, this deep, deep urban area is because... Uh, it's just it's just completely overrun with zombies. You see, everywhere he turns, more zombies are spawning. And there's parts of this map where uh, where it gets even worse. Where there's there's so many zombies that uh, we've actually got an achievement for trying to stand in his danger zone with zombies spawning all around you and, uh, and trying to survive. For five minutes. You do it, you do it. Is that top gun inspired? My machine gun got stuck there. Uh, it's it's actually uh, it's a little bit more archer inspired. Uh, whenever we were uh, working on making the danger zone. Uh, so, oh, here we go. There's the archer inspiration right there. <laughs> it says Lana. Lana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lana! <laughs> That's right. That 
let you know that you're in the danger zone. Yeah, basically whenever we were having meetings about the danger zone, and whenever somebody said danger zone for the first time, everyone else in the room would go, danger zone! So now we have turned over our car, and oh, I actually, yes. you know, we got to get another four-seater uh, so we can get the doctor back to the base. I don't think I, don't uh. think I should take the doctor back to the base. You know what? I think you're right. You should not take the doctor back to the base. Because we love you all, and we are not doing spoilers. Uh, and so basically, uh, if, we get, if we take this story too far, you're going to start knowing things you don't want to know. This doctor's got a lot to say about uh, what's going on in the zombie apocalypse, so we're going to leave that alone. Up. So Heads we do up. only have, uh, unfortunately, 10 minutes left. Is there anything that you wanted to show that you can think of uh, in the last 10 minutes? Uh, definitely tell these guys like what, what they would need to know, you know, to tell their customers, their friends, their customers, and their gamers. And before you do that, though, it's that time. All right, that is our second to last rack of the night. Uh, again, that is State of Decay uh, Digital Game Code. Uh, thanks to Undead and, and Brant. Uh, thank you so much for those, Jeffrey. Uh, all you have to do is type in the Twitch chat, and we are going to send those out on April 28th. But we do have one more to give out uh, at the end of the stream. But uh, last 10 minutes, guys, yeah, bring it home. So you'll see that uh, he just hit a bloater. Uh, with his car, like I said, a lot of our freak zombies have uh, reasons why you don't want to hit him with your car. The the Pharaoh will dodge it, the Juggernaut will destroy it, and the Bloater will fill it with poison gas. Uh, bloater is basically a zombie. Whoa, there's a Pharaoh right there, jumping on Dr. Horn. Um, bloaters are basically zombies that are made out of made out of farts. Uh, and if you, uh, you know, no, they're, 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 they're bloated up with uh, dead zombie gas. And uh, if, uh, if you get if you if you get too close to them or if you hit them with a the car, they just completely explode with gas. So this tunnel was actually one of our favorite places when we went to uh, Pax East to uh, show off Lifeline for the first time. Oh, one of our new truck skins, by the way. You'll see that right there. Spraying Realty, um, not Realty Rentals. Van, van Spraying van Rentals. 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 Uh, anyway, uh, you uh, uh, we would show that we would uh, we had this huge screen. Uh, over showing one of the demo stations and so whoever was at that demo station would, would always send people down here into this tunnel uh, to try to show off our death animations because if you get too deep into this tunnel uh, the zombies just spawn on you and there's nothing you can do about it uh, and so we would always this is where we would send people to get ripped in half because once their uh, death animation showed on that big screen people who were walking by uh, usually walking by the twitch booth they would see that that person get ripped in half on our screen and they'd be like oh I want to see what this game is. What game is this? <laughs> yeah, let me get in this line. So yeah, it was a, it was a small booth, but it was a uh, it was a busy booth because <laughs> people were into it. In, into it. So uh, so I was going the wrong way. Oh, that's fine. So so uh, I don't think uh, I think we've shown practically everything. Should I just run through a quick summary of what is special about this? Well, let's just talk about um, for if if you're gonna. If you're at your retail spot and you're going to get questions from people who already bought the game, why answer the question, why should people buy it again? And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's a really good question because, yeah, so, so the original game, uh, you know, it's been out for two years, and there's a lot of people who bought it. It was, it was a fast-selling title uh, on, on Xbox Live Arcade, and so you, you probably are going to bump into a lot of people. So here is quickly nice. the list of why the Year One Survival Edition is, is the best version of the game, and, it, and it's worth picking up. Uh, you know, part of it is uh, is basically we've we've, we've upresed all of the graphics. Everything about it looks better. All the textures, all the effects, a bunch of the animations. It's all been redone. The draw distance is a lot better. You can see across the entire map, uh, and 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 the atmosphere is hugely improved by you know being able to see farther, having those effects. Uh, you know, uh, having the redone lighting, e you know, everything about it. You really feel like you're in the world in a way that that you've never been able to before. On top of that, we've added a new mission type. We've added these supply drops, uh, and and I should tell you actually, you know, I didn't get into the story of the supply drops because you know you guys want no spoilers. But I'll give you one spoiler. Um, we set up this mystery of these supply drops, where they're coming from, what the, what these coded messages mean, and I'll tell you, uh, I never pay it off. Uh, we never, you know, we, we, we set up this mystery, and there's no answer to the mystery because, uh, you know, this game, uh, you know, this is not the last state of decay. We can't, we don't have anything specific to announce, but uh, this is this is not the end of the franchise. And so, 
for folks who you know who, who are in here for the long haul, you know, see starting to see the setup of, of some of these storylines that, that that'll get picked up in the future firsthand. Uh, that's that's something that's, uh, that that we hope will be really worthwhile. For example, remember that name that you see right there. <laughs> Weston Allied Industries is going to be very important. Uh, so. Uh, so things like that. There, there, there's, there's a way to, you know, this is a way to, to sort of get get ready for what com- what comes in the future. Other things. Uh, the the oh. Uh, the, oh, by the way, we got a quick question from uh, uh, Regnil or uh, Regnia, if it's French. Um, who asks, is, is, is the leaderboard separate? Uh, yeah, the leaderboards, the achievements, all that stuff is separate on the Xbox One. It's basically a new title as far as all that stuff is concerned. Uh, and so <laughs> that is another thing. Uh, we've got all new achievements, 1,500 achievement points. And so if folks are into achievements, uh, this is a great way to get more. Those, uh, are, those are in addition to the original, uh, the original set of achievements for the original game. Um, yeah, so you can get basically you can get tapped into the future of the franchise. Uh, a lot of these characters from Lifeline, I said, you know, we, we re-recorded all new dialogue for them. There's a whole bunch of new scenes that were added to the original game uh, based on bringing those characters in. So if you play Breakdown and you bring in these Lifeline characters, uh, you, 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 there's a whole bunch of new content you can enjoy there. Uh, we added a bunch of new guns to the game. Uh, I spe- a lot of them are available through Xbox One Challenges, which is a brand new thing. You can, you know, if, if you get the new the new edition of the game, you can get involved with the Xbox, uh, Xbox One Challenges, get a bunch of new toys to play with, a bunch of new vehicles, characters, weapons. Um, uh, we got a quick question from uh, from Ugg Plays. Uh, can you build your own base? Uh, basically, this this game is is not really about building something from scratch. ASAP. This game is about trying to survive in the bones of the old world uh, that's that, that's Mortar been left behind by the apocalypse. And so smoke. this is more about uh, scavenging and finding things that have been left behind, much more than it is about building new things from scratch. Oh, uh, but speaking of building, Brian, I don't know if you talked about this, but you had told me before, and I might have missed it if you did. But you said you can kick out members of your community and they will go end up building their own community and you can spy on them and see what they're doing later on in the game um th- not i mean not so much spy on them but if if you kick people out of the community it will have uh it'll have morale effects on your own community um yeah. go ahead Justin. yeah and, and, and the world is full you know you're, you're not the only community in the world and, and this is something we haven't been showing you too much of yet but uh, there's other enclaves that are out there. There's other survivors that are living in, in, in places. You can go and you can trade with them. They can sa- they can ask you to do things for them. You can go on missions for them uh, to earn rewards and things like that. Like there's there's it's not just you versus the zombies. It's you versus the zombies, and then it's there's other people in the world that you try to help. And so when folks leave your base, they, they become one of those uh, one of those other uh, other little groups. You know they can they, they and and you can you can go and you know uh, they, it's not like they just vanish. Uh, they can you know into thin air. They they're they're still a part of the game. Uh, we're starting to run out of time. Let me yeah. let me uh, see. So so. Do you have any closing s- closing statements? Uh, just just basically, you know, this this version of the game is is the uh, is is the definitive one for us. This is the one that we really uh, always wished that the game was going to be. Uh, and and the fact that that the game's been successful enough that we've been able to come back and sort of do do this version of the game has been a huge a huge thing for us. Uh, we we're very emotionally connected to this game, and so it's been a a huge thing for us. So all of you who have who have you know bought the game and supported us and helped us. Uh, you know, get to make basically our dream game for the past couple of years. Uh, it's it's been amazing. So so thank you all so much uh, for, for for being involved in this and for and for helping us out, and uh, and ju- and just for being here. Yep. That's awesome. And I feel bad. So Sebastian also joined us from Microsoft Studios, and he's been in the back. Uh, very quietly, patiently, he took a back seat, uh, which we appreciate. So I want Sebastian to come up uh, and at least push, at least pull the dupe wheel for our last rack. All you got to do is really pull that wheel. Uh, this is like the Price is Right wheel. All right. Yep. Here we go. All clear. That's work not here is done. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Sebastian. He came uh, all the way over to uh, pull that that last rack of deep wheel. And then uh, hold on, Jeffrey's got one more thing. Well, I, just, I just wanted to say that before we end up signing off. Whoa. Uh, before we end up signing off. Um, uh, if you guys have any questions we did not get to, uh, if we, you know, if if you've got more that you want to ask, you can contact us at. Uh, so our our community manager is uh, is uh, Sonia at Undead Labs uh, on Twitter, and you can also contact me directly if you want to. I'm uh, at Rangatang uh, on Twitter. So uh, and I can I can actually uh, see what is my mouse. There it is. He'll so throw, yeah, he'll throw my. Mouse. Yeah. So so that'll be so I'll say so uh, at Rangatang. Typing this in right now, and I'm sounding like a weirdo uh, talking about typing. So yeah, so um, 
So at orangutan is my is my uh, Twitter handle. At Brant Fitzgerald is uh, is Brant's Twitter handle. And so it, yeah, so if we if we skip you, so one one of the things that Seven's been doing actually, Sebastian's been doing that I should. Uh, I should uh, uh, give him credit for it. He's been coming up and pointing out your questions to me. Uh, so a lot of you who got your questions answered, you owe that to Seb. Uh, but if if I did miss your questions and I didn't get to it, please contact me at Rangatang, contact Brant at Brant or talk to Sonya at Undead Labs, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to answer you. And, and I just threw my Twitter in there as well. I'll let you know when the plane learns go live, when the community channel goes live. But I figure if we're all sharing Twitter handles, Seb, you want us to get yours in there too? Yeah. We'll, we'll just all throw it in there. He'll type it in there. Um, Brant... Jeffrey, Sebastian, seriously, so Watch thank you so time. much for coming. You guys dropped ungodly amounts of uh, knowledge uh, on State K, which is awesome. This Maybe is a great game, not. a great buy for the price. Uh, Blaine, thank you as well for co-hosting. Sheroy, thank you for moderating Nightbot. But as always, the biggest thank you goes out to you guys. You seriously are literally the best audience and viewers on Twitch. Uh, and you guys hold that hold that torch every week uh, with the Play and Learns. Uh, quick reminder, not a play and learn next Tuesday uh, at 5.30 or normal time. It's going to be again uh, Thursday at 5.30, same time as today, a week from now. And it's a very special guest play and learn from 343. We're going to have Frank O'Connor, nice. uh, Andy Dundunsky, uh, and Strong Side, former Halo Pro Team Optic player, coming on the stream to play with you guys uh, and to answer your questions. And we're going to be giving out amazing racks of kindness. I heard that we might be giving out, actually we are giving out, uh, one that? or maybe even two Xbox One TMCC bundles. Uh, so very special play and learn next week. That's next Thursday, guys. Uh, but today is all about State of Decay. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, thank you, audience, for stopping in. Again, uh, hands down, best viewing audience on Twitch. We will see you guys next week. Uh